This is the Roller Coaster Podcast, and I'm your host, Lucy Q. Life is a wild ride. It has twists and turns. It's scary, exciting, and downright fun. So throw your head back, arms in the air, and come along with me for the ride. Life is like a roller coaster, baby. Episode 200 of The Roller Coaster will soon be here, and this is your chance to be part of the fun. I'm going to be recording this episode with coaches and listeners just like you. If you want to be part of the fun, head over to NectarGrowth.com. Sign up for free and RSVP for the November 18th event. All of the details will be under the events tab. I can't wait to see you there. What are you waiting for? Come join us. You know you're worth it. Do labels help us define who we are? Or do they create divide in a world that's already dangerously fractured? Why do we feel compelled to put ourselves and each other into boxes to categorize, organize, and justify our our existence. Joining me today is Felipe Blue, a therapist who is on the front lines regarding mental health and addiction treatments to share the concept of Ubuntu. I am because we are. Welcome to the roller coaster, Felipe. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. So, where does your story begin and how do the concept of labels blend into it? The story begins many, many times, many moons ago in a place called Haiti. We came over in 1980, my father being Cuban, my mother being Haitian. And we first came in through Miami and though the Cubans were allowed in, the Haitians were not. So, you know, the darker skinned people treated much differently than the lighter skinned people already defined by a label. And when they tried to ship us back, you know what I'm saying? Luckily some parties intervened and we were able to stay. We then moved to, you know, a place that would be deemed safer where you could blend in more. And, you know, then, you know, my father with his own issues regarding the political climate of Cuba and how it impacted him and his ability to navigate this world, got into some maladaptive and addictive behaviors of his own. And it impacted our once close family in many ways. My mother didn't happen to be the sole parent of that household of um, her her children to navigate a world that she did not even know, just doing the best she could, then falling into the same trap. I saw solace in gang activities, you know what I'm saying? Family and gang activities, connectedness, in gang activities. Because our father had a thing in which he didn't want us to be connected to our roots. So we could only speak English. We couldn't speak Spanish or Creole or French because he wanted us to be Americanized because the trauma that he experienced in Cuba was so daunting, I guess. I don't know much about the Cuba experience just from what he says in his gibberish when he's drunk or high. Um, And so, like I said, I sought identity through my gang affiliations. I was a Crip. And then wanted to adhere to their standards of life, wanted to be seen as a great person in that organization, a great asset in that organization, doing things that went against a very strong value set, but an adaptation in order to feel belonging. As my mother had mental health issues and addiction issues. My father had mental health and addiction issues. It's not a far cry to indicate that their children too would suffer from mental health and addiction issues. And then that was another label placed upon me. And then when I broke down or when I decompensated to such a degree in which I was hospitalized, then another label with the diagnosis. And then not being treated appropriately because of their culture that was treating you different so much from your own or that norm placed upon you was so different from your own. And that you, to be anything outside of that norm was in itself a diagnosis at that time. 
labels are very dangerous in my opinion. The shortcuts to identifying people, but people are more than any label, any adjective that you place upon them. They're multidimensional and people don't have to be what they're labeled as, as because you are who you are. And a label is a, a shortcut to people identifying who you are. And I think a lot of times people get the diagnosis or get a label and they identify solely with it. And they take on all the <laughs> associations with such a diagnosis or such a label, forgetting that their core self is so much more, so much different. But they trap themselves into that box of that label and it creates a life that, that could be so much more. When I was able to shake off my labels, that's when I became more. How did you shake off your labels? The crazy thing is the way I shook off my labels was, I guess, I guess bottoming out. My brother was killed based on our gang affiliations. And after I did what I did in retaliation, somebody reached out to me to save me. And I moved down south and I had to basically start over or re identify myself, you know what I'm saying? Cast myself in a different light, become a different character. As the people down south didn't know that I was a, a crip. They didn't know I was a murderer. They didn't know I was a drug addict. They didn't know that I had these issues. I could be anybody I wanted to be. So I chose to be different. But we all have that choice. And I almost want to say that labels are a habit that we keep defaulting to in society. Yes. Um, I don't know how to break that habit because it's so embedded in our very existence. I don't even know how you begin to erase it. Uh, well, for me, I keep reminding myself when I encounter somebody, I keep reminding myself, this is a beautiful soul here having a human experience. And I think once you can shift away from a label and just see people for another human being, you're no different than I am. You feel what I feel. You see what I see. You've, you've seen worse, but it all affects us emotionally. So what are your thoughts on how we start to remove the labels from our culture? Unfortunately, much like you can't get rid of the Democrats and the Republicans, <laughs> it's so embedded into our society, so embedded into our culture so embedded into who we are that you can't. But the important thing is that the people themselves can free themselves from that bondage of labeling by not adhering to the label. When I came down south, I said, I'm not gonna be Mr. Blue anymore. I'm gonna be Felipe Christopher and focus on what Felipe Christopher can do. I went to school, I went to church. I invested in community activities. I started a nonprofit just to undo all the pain that I've caused others and that I caused myself and my family so I could be better, so I could feel better, that for I can understand that, yo, you did all this dirt, you did all this wrong, but now you're doing all this good. And though people, some people may judge you by that, you know that you're writing it by doing what you're doing now. And that you gotta keep on the straight and narrow from now on, you gotta keep, you gotta stay good. You gotta keep doing good. Cause it only takes one little mistake for people to reflect on you as they reflected on you before you made that change in your life. Change is possible. Removing these labels is possible because you have to believe in self, your thoughts, how you feel about yourself. That when you say, I am bipolar, you've identified as being bipolar, instead of it just being an attribute that you can work through 
strategize to not let that impact you in such a way. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a crackhead. I'm a heroin addict. Da da da. You're not your label. You're not a label. You may have a heroin addict, opiate addiction. You might have cannabis addiction. You might be diagnosed with bipolar or depression or schizophrenia. That does not define you. How many people can I name? Well, not off the top of my head, but if I did a little research, that have these diagnoses and are doing quite well. Producers and actors and actresses, politicians, teachers, government officials, because they manage to do what they need to do to navigate this world outside of what, what, what one may consider a label. And that's what I strive to do. And that's what I strive to do in my practice. Do not define yourself by your label and do not define yourself by yesterday as today is a new day. If I had to be held accountable for everything I did prior to today, well, one, I wouldn't be here today because, well, I did some things. But focusing on today, doing what I need to do for today is the gift I give to myself and to others. You're doing, a, you're doing so many good things to give back to your community. In all of this, have you been able to find the space to forgive yourself for anything that you may have done in the past? Yes and no. I, I decompensate at times. I slip back into feeling less than. I have, um, <laughs> we call it an imposter, th imposter, um, imposter syndrome, syndrome yeah. here in um, America. <laughs> oh, Sometimes we call I feel it that like too. That. Sometimes I feel like that because I know that, you know what I'm saying, on the flip side, you, you're, you was a criminal, you was a killer, you was this, you was that. And all these other ones who might be in the same space that I'm in now probably had straight laced lives. They had a mom and they had a dad. They went to the good schools. They did what they're supposed to do. They had no problems with drugs. They never been in a criminal empire. Sometimes. But luckily, I'm in therapy and I can work through those things because I believe that therapists should have therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think everybody needs therapy. But don't you think though that your past puts you in a better position to help people because you have that experience, you have that understanding. I've sat with therapists before that sit there with their notebook and their pen and all the diplomas on the, on the wall. And, you know, they look all squeaky clean. And how could you possibly understand who I am? If you've never experienced anything, if you've only ever read about this shit in a book. I know that I'm in a, everything that happened put me here today to be the best me I can be today. These experiences guided me. And even if I don't ever speak upon the experiences, because I meet people where they're at genuinely and come from a genuinely non-judgmental stance, because I'm not going to treat you any worse because of A, B, C, or D, I'm going to treat you as I would want to be treated if we were happen to be reversed. If your shoes were my shoes, your outfit was my outfit, Drew. Because at any given time, any tragedy, any crisis, I could be right back in those shoes. So tell me about Ubuntu. Ubuntu. I am because we are. I find that the concept exists even if we think it doesn't exist, even if we don't know about the concept. Look at the people closest to you. In essence, they define you. So when I was a crip and I hung around drug addicts and murderers, addicts and dealers and all those things, pimps and hoes, that's what I was. I was in that circle. So that defined me. When I moved out of that environment and started to do better for myself, and then I moved into a circle of people who were educated or who was trying to get education, like in college and things like that, then that was a circle that defined me. Now, always wanting to do better because I didn't want to see be seen as less than. But then moved into different circles in which they <laughs> looked at the other circles I was in and thought badly of me because I might have been the smartest person in their eyes in that circle and thought that that means that was the wrong circle or the wrong circle I need to be in because I would never strive to be more because I was already more than in their eyes. 
Ubuntu is basically just make sure you have the right people in your life, the right supports in your life, and to remove the people that are draining you, taken from you, not reciprocating the support, love, or whatever that you're giving them. Not saying that you're judged by your company, but many times you are, but you grow from your company. If I'm around a lot of people that take, 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 or drain me emotionally and not, don't pour back into me, then I'm not going to feel good about myself, or I'm not going to strive to be better, or I'm going to feel less than. Versus I have people around me that pour into me. As I pour into them, we grow together. Ubuntu, I am, because we are. And you touched on something very important there, and that's about removing the people from your circle that aren't supporting, that aren't helping you fill your own cup, that aren't there helping you be your best. And those people, they could be your friends, and they could also be your family. That's right. Oftentimes, it's both. <laughs> and not because of their, by any means of their own, nothing against them. Because you only know what you know. And you know, if you don't know to be better, or if you've been taught to navigate the world in such a way to get your needs met, then that is what it is. I can work to educate you, to empower you. You can take this information and grow from it or not. I'm, I'm not, I don't have all the answers. All I know is that every day I strive to be better. Every day I try to be an example of the, of the right kind of person to be as I navigate this world. And so sometimes I fall short, as I'm sure we all do. But then you know what? I don't have to define myself by yesterday either. Today's a new day. Or you might be still holding on to the memories of yesterday, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, we can get stuck. We mm. can get stuck living in yesterday. Right. And yeah. we often do looking backwards. We can't move forward looking behind us. We can learn from it but we don't have to stay there. It's best not to stay there. Yeah. And I think, you know, in my own experiences, you do have to look back to heal mm -hmm. because it's in those, those moments of pain and trauma that that's where you get some of the best lessons about yourself. Although it's, it sucks while you're going through it. Mm -hmm. Once you come through the other side, you have the privilege of, Hindsight being 2020. Right. But we should get to a point in life in which every looking forward, we have that 2020 vision based on what we learned in the past, where we got the 2020. Yeah. And that's that, why I find myself getting to a more wise state of mind, being more rational in my thoughts. Because when I was younger, I'm definitely an emotional thinker, very emotional reactive. As I got older, more rational, but now manifesting wisdom. So I don't have to make the mistakes to learn the lessons. I learned enough lessons. I should be good now. <laughs> yeah, you're like, please, no more lessons. <laughs> but if you're, not, if you're not brought up in an environment where you learn to address your feelings and deal with your emotions, then how are you ever supposed to be able to do that as an adult? It's a good question. Well, one, I would say therapy, you know what I'm saying? Therapy, meditation, reflection, you know, growth through journaling and talking about your experiences and writing about your experiences and looking at the common factors that contributed to some of your identified downfalls. I wasn't brought up in a family where I learned emotional stabilization. My mama was off the chain crazy. My sister was off the chain crazy. Shit, I'll be honest, I was off the chain crazy. So, but... I learned from those things and I grew from those things. And the things I learned not, wasn't necessarily in a school setting, life experiences, learning from people, other people, getting support from other people, changing the negative connotations of my life based on the appropriate types of support. You have to have, or it's best to have, the right kind of people around you to tell you when you're wrong to tell you when you're right, to give you support when you're doing good, but to also give you support when you're doing bad so you can do better. Unfortunately, this world is very selfish, very egocentric. That's hard sometimes to get, or at least to get adequately, at least from what I've seen. So yeah. I try to be that for at least my clients and those that I'm in the circles with. Yeah. 
looking back when you were in all of that chaos, do you have that one turning point in mind where you turned the corner and you decided to go in another way? Was there a catalyst for that? July 13th, 1995, when my brother was shot and killed. I don't remember much after that for about a year and a half, two years. I blacked out for the most part. I think it's my mind protecting me, but I was told I killed a couple of people. I went to jail for a couple of that. I went to trial for that. But I guess there wasn't enough evidence and I beat it. Or did I beat it? Or maybe I was designed to be for something else. I don't know if I killed anybody. I was just told I did. I don't know if I did any crimes. I was just told I did. I couldn't recall it. But I do remember that I blamed myself for his death. I blamed myself for a shooting. I know it was for my shooting. I was a rapper at the time. Oh, my mouth was so reckless. I would talk shit about everybody. Make it so personal, so dom so damning, so hurting. My mixtape, uh, my mixtape. Woo, catalog was just damaging. Like, you're not going to be respected in your hood anymore. You're done. And I know they retaliated against my brother based on that, that mixtape series. That, yeah, because I wasn't necessarily dealing the drugs. I wasn't necessarily doing the crimes. I was on the music part of the gang. I just wrecked shop from what they, I was told and what I knew. And I think he was targeted. He was at a party. He got into it with somebody. Later on, a girl called him over to a certain project where we wasn't supposed to go because it belonged to a different gang. And then they walked up behind him. They shot him in the back of his head and shot him in his chest and his head. Took his money and robbed him. Then put it in the mailbox a couple of days later. Jeez. You mentioned that you were a rapper and the things you were saying were really damaging. Was that your way of expressing the pain that you were burying deep down? Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, it was, um, we call it musical therapy. <laughs> and it was, um, I guess it was journaling, you know, audio journaling, you know, what, some today would probably call podcasting <laughs> or blogging, video blogging or whatever, between the music videos and uh, the mixtapes. And having a voice because I didn't feel I had a voice. My father, like I said, basically eliminated our cultures. I didn't have a true identity except that associated with whatever I belonged to at the time, the Crips. So how do I stand out amongst all these peers? Well, damn, I'm a poet. No, nah, I'm a rapper. Let's do this. You still rap? No, no, no. no. For good? <laughs> do you, I'm, too do you... old, I'm too old to rap. Oh, <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> We're never too old. I am I, the I, least I, musically inclined person. I, <laughs> yeah, I produce I, a little bit. I write a little bit, but... Nah, I, I, I try to rap, but no, it's just, it don't, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> the rap muscle isn't there anymore. <laughs> right, right. Music, music has changed way too much for me to be relevant today. <laughs> you can be relevant in your own circles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as we wrap up, you've shared an extremely powerful story. What are your final thoughts or words of wisdom that you would like to share with our listeners? Not final thoughts, but just thoughts, like you said, of wisdom to carry you to the next plane of your existence. Ubuntu, I am because we are, is one of the mantras that I live by, die by. Find the right circle, be with the right people in order to grow emotionally, spiritually, physically. If you look at your peers from when you was in high school or middle school, a lot of those people aren't in your life anymore. And there's for a reason, I'm sure. You have to have that same ideology in life. What do I want to be? What do I want to do? And then try to associate yourself, be with the kind of people that mirror that or that support that. Additionally, yesterday, 
does not have to define today. If I was defined today by yesterday, I wouldn't be a therapist. I wouldn't be a helping agent. I wouldn't be an advocate. I wouldn't be a community involved person. I wouldn't be a father, at least a good father. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be a good husband, at least I would think. But I'm not defining myself. Society may, you know, define it. Oh, you have this on your record. You have this record. So I have to circumvent that or work around it or find an alternative to maybe my end goal. But still and yet, I get to some reverence of what my goal is because I'm not going to be defined by yesterday. And as much as you may want to define me by that, that's on you. That's not on me. And where can people connect with you? You can connect with me at morethantherapy.org. That's more than therapy. Dot org. If you're looking at connecting with Felipe, make sure you check out the show notes. I'll have the links in there. And Felipe, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your story. Thank you for having me. Be well, be great. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Want to chat or share your ideas about today's show? Pop me an email at hello at the rollercoasterpodcast.com. Don't forget to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at The Roller Coaster Podcast. Our theme song, Roller Coaster, was performed by The Lucky Setback. Audio editing by the one and only Jeff Quigley of Quigley Creator. Life is like a roller coaster, baby, baby. I wanna ride, 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 ride. Life is like a roller coaster, baby, baby. Bye. Uh-huh.